PK in the universe and I am back again with another video and today I want to talk about Xbox 360 versus PS3 in 2024. There's been so many people lately who have had a new reignited interest in 7th gen gaming and I'm happy to see it. You know years ago I made a video called 7th gen isn't dead and this was during like the PS4 Xbox One era and a lot of people kind of you know laughed at that video. It's like oh give with the times man you got to buy the PS4 and the Xbox One and now we have PS5 and Xbox Series. So a lot has changed, but there's a lot of people with a reignited interest in these consoles and the games that are on these consoles. So I wanted to do a quick uh, video here where I discuss these two consoles, sort of a compare and contrast kind of video. And at the end, I'm going to talk about who I think won the war, you know, and I think who won the war between PS3 and Xbox 360 is pretty subjective. Um, I'm not going to talk about the Nintendo Wii. Obviously, the Nintendo Wii sold you know, the most units of all three of these generations, and it was low powered, it wasn't an HD system, but it was also less expensive and had a smaller attach rate in a lot of respects because a lot of people who were more casual gamers bought the thing, you know, and then three months never did anything with it. For the most part, a lot of gamers who weren't PC gamers at the time, at least, you know, were had a lot of focus on the PS3 and the Xbox 360 as far as their console to go to. But both have their advantages and disadvantages, so I want to do a quick comparison of these two consoles. So here we go. First up, let's talk about backwards compatibility. The Xbox 360 is backwards compatible with a number of Xbox games, but not all Xbox games. There's some that you just can't play on there, you know, that aren't backwards compatible. And I think you have to do some kind of internet update to make them compatible, if I'm not mistaken. It's been a while since I updated my Xbox 360. And of course now a lot of games that were on the Xbox One and Xbox 360 can be played on the Xbox One or Xbox Series X. So there are some interesting backwards compatibility. It's interesting how Microsoft has embraced backwards compatibility, whereas the PlayStation 3, no PlayStation 3 game is backwards compatible with a PS4 and a PS5. But the PS3, let's get to the PS3 here. All PS3s are backwards compatible with all PS1 games as far as I know. And there are some PS3s that are backwards compatible with PS2 games through various different ways. Some of the earlier PS3s, are, it's hardware is backwards compatible. But then in later PS3s, it's an emulation basically, kind of like all PS1s are basically emulation is how the backwards compatibility works with those systems. Both consoles have their own little quirky hardware failure thing going on. With the Xbox 360, it was the red ring of death. With the PS3, it was the yellow light of death. I have experienced the yellow light of death with PS3s. I had talked about in a previous video how I have owned like four or five PS3s at least, and at least one of them did have the yellow light of death. Unfortunately, it was my backwards compatible one, which I don't even have anymore. It's the consequences of, you know, mo more modern gaming with a lot more moving parts, unfortunately. You have to wonder, will Xbox 360s and PS3s even exist 100 years from now? They might become kind of a rare item, you know, going forward because, again, of the failure rates, you know, and how many people know how to work on these. I mean, there's a lot of people right now who know how to work on these, but maybe in the future there won't be as many people. You never can tell. I think that's why emulation in general is so important. Obviously, there is a PS3 emulator. I'm not sure if there's a really good Xbox 360 emulator, but there is a working PS3 emulator. I don't know how well it works with every single game, but it's good that emulation exists and things can be emulated. But yeah, these consoles have their quirks and there are consoles that will fail, you know, and that's why it's fortunate at least that there were 80 some million of each console built in different variations. So. It's going to be a while before that happens, probably not even in our lifetime. Let's talk about the online stores. As a lot of people know, the Xbox 360 store is shutting down pretty soon, but you'll still be able to buy games that were backwards compatible, I guess, with Xbox One, but you'll have to buy them like on your Xbox One or Xbox Series or through the Xbox app or something like that. The PlayStation 3 PSN store is still open. It is still open at the time of this recording. A lot of people wish it was not open, so they had a video to make about it or something. But uh, yeah, the PlayStation Store is still open, and you can still buy PS3 and PS Vita games as well. PSP games, I think you can buy those on the Vita if it's also a Vita backwards compatible one, which is kind of weird because the actual way to buy games through your PSP you can no longer do through that PSN network. 
The Legacy PSN store is an interesting ecosystem, and it's fascinating how many games are crossed by. You know, like if you buy the PlayStation 3 version, you also get the Vita version or something like that. Or sometimes that works too with the PS4 version, you know, but not on every single game in every situation. For example, I bought uh, Pure Solar and the Great Architects, and I bought Axiom Verge. Both bought them on PS3, and fortunately they were backwards compatible with the PS4. So I actually got to download those games on my PS4, so that's kind of nice. But of course it is a shame that a lot of these games do not carry over to the PS4 or PS5. Which is what's kind of cool about Xbox 360 is a lot of games also carry over from Xbox 360 to Xbox One to Xbox Series depending on the game. So they both have their ups and downs but I think I do have to give it to Sony for actually still having an active store on the PlayStation 3. But of course that could change down the road and this might make this video a little dated but that's how it is at the moment. One thing I think is really cool is the fact that HDMI has always been standard with the PS3. Not always the case with Xbox 360, though my current Xbox 360 I do have does have HDMI. Interestingly enough, when I bought my Xbox 360, it did not come with an HDMI cord. It came with the uh, component cable. And it's also nice that, of course, that you can use AV out as well on both these systems. So you could play these theoretically on a CRT TV with no problem. In fact, I've played both of these at some point on a CRT TV. It looks kind of wonky, but it's interesting that you can do it, period. It's kind of an interesting gee whiz kind of thing. Who sold more consoles? Some people might think that Xbox 360 sold more consoles because for many, many years, the Xbox 360 was beating PS3 in sales, quite a bit by actually. Then, towards the end of its life cycle, the Xbox 360 only sold 84 million units, while as the PS3 sold 87.4 million units. It's hard to say why that is. Is it because the PlayStation 3 was maybe manufactured for longer? Maybe it's because there was no backwards compatibility with PS3 and people were looking for a cheap option? It's hard to say, really. It's really hard to say. I can't remember exactly who stopped manufacturing what first. I also think when they were first announcing the PS4 and Xbox One, there was a lot of negative stigma about Xbox One. And of course, Microsoft reversed course on their DRM always on stuff. But... You know, that did not change the fact that, you know, the, the ill will towards Microsoft was very much there. So I think that could have maybe had a bit of a factor in why you see the PS3 at the end sell more units. Because maybe they, you know, had a lot more goodwill behind them because of how they approached 8th gen. So it's hard to say, but, but who sold more games? That could be a metric as well to consider, but I'm not sure exactly who actually sold more games. It's really hard to say. It's also important to consider that most developers were developing for the Xbox 360 and then haphazardly porting the game to the PS3 because the PS3's architecture was super complicated in comparison to the Xbox 360. And it was much easier just to make the Xbox 360 version and just port it to the PS3. So that's why a lot of times you see the Xbox 360 version of a game be better than the PS3 versions. In that regard, the quality of the games might have been better on Xbox 360, especially in regard to multi-platform games. Games that were, you know, not just on PS3 or not just on Xbox 360 might have looked always better on Xbox 360. But there were some downsides too, of course, to the Xbox 360. We got to talk about the disc formats here, folks. The interesting thing about Xbox 360, of course, is they chose to go with DVDs. And HD DVDs are actually compatible with Xbox 360. But the great irony, of course, is that HD DVD was beat out by Blu-ray in the format wars. And Blu-ray won in spades, which is a Sony deal. And it was interesting, too. I remember when I got my PS3, it actually came with a copy of Spider-Man 3, the movie. Not a game, but the movie. <laughs> which of course is a Sony product. Of course, at the end of the day, a Blu-ray holds more information and it's far more durable than a DVD. So at the end of the day, when it came to that, the PlayStation definitely had an advantage because for example, a game like uh, LA Noir, I got back there, you know, three discs, three discs for an Xbox 360, whereas that game would be on one disc on PS3. But it's also important to note that a lot of games, of course, you know, had DLC. There was a lot of downloadable content. But I'll say one thing about this generation is this was like the last generation that actually the games played on the disc. I mean, I guess you could count the Wii U as being eighth generation where games played on the disc, but for the most part, 
as far as games for the Xbox 360 and PS3. The systems that preceded them, the PS4 and Xbox One, of course, have Blu-rays, but the games don't actually play off of the disc. It's like a disc, basically, that downloads the game to the system, and then the disc works as a key. So physical media isn't really even physical anymore. Physical media is kind of a lie when it comes to Xbox One and PS4 and, of course, Xbox Series and PS5. Especially considering we live in a time of day one updates, you know, and DLC. It's like it's not really all on the disc, okay? So many things are just not on the disc. But you could make the argument, you know, down the road, eventually this stuff will be emulated and people will find ways to patch games themselves in the future, in that far-flung future. So at the end of the day, it really doesn't matter, I guess, because somebody downloaded the stuff somewhere and someone will find a way to put it on the internet because that's just how it always goes. But yeah, at the end of the day, Sony won the format war, no doubt about it, because we're still using Blu-rays. They're still using Blu-rays on the PS4 and PS5 and Xbox One and Xbox Series. Well, of course, the newer ones use 4K Blu-rays, but it's still Blu-rays at the end of the day. So yeah, in that regard, PlayStation definitely won the war on that. I think a lot of people are still incredibly nostalgic for Xbox 360 because a lot of people probably are still frustrated with the way Microsoft is approaching gaming. There's still people who come back to Xbox. There's still people who come back to Xbox. And the thing about Xbox 2, of course, they bought all those studios, you know, so if you're a hardcore Bethesda fan, of course you're gonna get Xbox stuff, you know, especially if you know it's never coming to PS4 or may or may not come to PS4 or PS5, I mean. So, you know, it's like Xbox always keeps buying up all these studios. And sometimes they do stuff with them, sometimes they don't, obviously. You know, I don't know what they ever did with Rare. I think that's one of the hugest disappointments. When Microsoft bought Rare, they never really did a ton with it. You know, I mean, Rare Replay is obviously a game I would want to get on Xbox One if I had an Xbox One. I still do not have an Xbox One or an Xbox Series. I do have my Xbox 360, and of course I have a PC. And I think, of course, Game Pass gives people a lot of options to play games, and that's another way a lot of people like playing games. I think a lot of Microsoft fans have become more digital gamers because of Xbox Game Pass, and I think that's affected the sales in a lot of respects because a lot of people can, of course, play these games on PC, especially if you have Xbox Game Pass Ultimate. You know, in Microsoft, they're the, they're the founders, really, of this, um, you know, pay-to-play kind of thing. Because, and I don't mean pay to play as in pay to win kind of thing, I mean as in paying to play games online. That's another thing I just remembered is that PlayStation 3, you can play games for free online still. You can't say that about Xbox, and you've never been able to say that about Xbox because you always needed Xbox Gold to play your games online. And some people say, well, you know, it's a better server because the online costs money. And that is an argument that can be made, certainly, but of course, you know, Nintendo has their own online and you have to pay for it. And a lot of people complain about the service on playing games online there. So I don't know. I don't know what the right answer is. You know, it's a mixed bag for sure. I think the PS3 is great. I think the Xbox 360 is great. But who won? Who ultimately won? That is a hard thing to say. Because, again, you know, who bought the most games? Where did you buy all your games at? It's hard to say. It depends on the person. And I don't have exact figures on how many more Xbox 360 games were shipped versus PS3 games. And then, of course, Limited Run Games makes PS3 games still periodically. Like, what was there was a Jack and Daxter collection? Like, how do we factor that in? And so it's really hard to say, but, you know, as far as format wars, you know, PlayStation won in spades, honestly, because that's the standard now. And you also have to consider, after Xbox One fiasco back in 2013, the PS4 and the PS5 have continued to outsell the Xbox competitor because of that. And that changed everything. But man, back in 7th gen, Xbox 360 felt like they were always on top. It always felt like Xbox 360 was the go-to. I mean, you could say something as cliche as, well, the fans won in the end. Yeah, yeah, you could say that. I think overall, you know, Sony won the war in the long run. But absolutely, I think during 7th gen, Xbox 360 was king. So... I don't have a really solid, pure conclusion, but I feel like the Xbox 360, when it came to multi-plats, Xbox 360 was still the way to go. The only thing that was, again, annoying about it was the lack of storage on these discs and how much more vulnerable those discs were to scratching. So it's kind of hard to say truly who won. I mean, 
my personal opinion, I would still go with a PS3 over an Xbox 360 in spite of the Xbox 360 having the better versions of the game a lot of times because of the convenience of just having one disc to deal with instead of three in a lot of different cases. So, but what are your thoughts? Who do you think won the war? Uh, was it Xbox 360 or was it PS3? Comment below. I'd love to hear what you have to say. Anyways, thank you guys so much for watching and stay awesome in this universe. Thanks. Bye.